Today we are here to um, discuss this topic on um, narratives of design. So what 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 are we discussing today is more about the design story. What is the story behind what we design, what we do, what is the narrative behind it, how these narratives are embedded in our memory and how we translate our memories into design everyday design whether we are not particularly here reaching out to talk about architecture or interiors it could be any any um, multi multidisciplinary for, uh, type of design like you could you could be talking about fashion you could be talking about product design you could be talking about uh, graphic design or uh, ceramics so uh, today is a day when uh, design the word design is used by one and all and uh, 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 these products any design product is an everyday use for us whatever we do whether it's a cup of tea we are holding a cup of uh, glass or a cup of uh, uh, say uh, a cup of uh, saucer it's all designed to make sense so we are here to talk about and build this narrative in design uh, we all have our stories to share and how we've come about to begin our journey and reach where we are so uh, 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 coming i mean do you want me to start or do you want me to moderate this session shweta can you uh, tell me how do you want to go about this do we want to, do you want us to share our journeys with you I guess uh, Shweta's on board. Yes, yeah. So you you want us to share our journeys with you all, all design. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So well, I started very young. Uh, I come from a family of uh, uh, architects. My grandfather had done his uh, civil engineering in uh, Karachi University. That was uh, Hindustan then and uh, before partition. And then uh, when he moved to Jodhpur. he was uh, you know one of the uh, team members that built the foundation of the umed bhavan palace so uh, he was very fortunate to work there for many years for the maharaja and the maharaja being very impressed with his integrity and honesty uh, suggested his hand in marriage to the diwan of jaisalmer his daughter so he traveled from jodhpur to marry my grandmother in jaisalmer and my grandmother was also i would say she grew up with a lot of culture around her being in jaisalmer uh, she was surrounded by a uh, beautiful architecture a uh, beautiful surround absolutely uh, brave stories stories of uh, riding on a horse stories of using the sword stories of uh, you know riding elephants so she had a lot of brave tales to tell us as we grew up they both moved to bombay and uh, he started his, his own uh, humble practice in mumbai where he uh, built what is now the heritage uh, area called sikanagar and he did a lot of projects there and uh, started his own journey at uh, with a, a office at fort fountain which is in the heart of bombay now so uh, his his uh, humble uh, story led to almost 80 years of legacy we are we have the fourth generation architect in our uh, uh, household right now so i always grew up with uh, talks of cement and stone and uh, design on the dining table every day it was that talk and uh, that's all i heard from my father my uncle my cousins we lived in a joint family and this is all i wanted to be because these were the stories these were the narratives that came to me from them of uh, how they did things on site and what inspired them the people that inspired them and the works that they did so it was like uh, just uh, one thing one focus as a very young girl that when i grew up i want to be an architect and that's all so 
carving my uh, space to become an architect everyone at home said uh, look we all are architects here we all have that why don't you do something more creative and get into interiors instead we could do with having one person with aesthetics you know in the house so i applied for uh, my admission for jj school of art and i was very 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 lucky and fortunate to uh, be one of the uh, 75 students out of 2000 that they select uh, to be part of their college and uh, somebody told us this i'm telling because there's so many students here you know i particularly say this right now that uh, somebody who guided me my mentor for the exams he told me that if you survive and understand 6 month 6 months in a place like jj in an institution like jj you will make it you will have a lifetime to look for you know like look look upon so so just concentrate for the first 6 months if you make it you will make it so i i really worked hard for the next 5 years and jj school of art is extremely multidisciplinary we are you know like a uh, in our uh, first two years foundation years we are taught everything we are taught we are taught uh, architecture we talk about we talk about interiors it's graphics it's print making with ceramics it's textile designing it's metallurgy it's cera- it's it's uh, um, sculpture so you are thrown into so many walks of life history of art history of architecture you are thrown into so much of design and you're talking to people from all walks of life there is the architecture college just next to us so the canteen becomes a very hot spot for you know bubbling discussions on design and uh, you are meeting all kinds of people from advertising so it it opens a entire uh, plethora of you know um uh, uh, thoughts you are you are you know uh, just exposed to so many uh, ideas and a lot of good even literature from the library so jj was a fantastic five year experience which thoroughly you know prepares you to uh, go to the next level then i started interning with uh, one of uh, the one of the top designers i think internship plays a very big role in molding you and your ideas and thoughts i wanted to finish college and start on my own i was ready okay i'm going to do it mai kar dikhaungi types you know ko mujhe to kuch karna hai but my father he you know helped me back pull the leash and said no young lady you need to first uh, you know learn from someone else you are not entering the uh, family uh, practice you must learn under somebody and that's how you will learn so have patience there is no need to run after money right now this is the age to learn so it's why i say this because of all the students hearing is that you you may have to work for whatever circumstances but you should not forget to learn i learn even today I mean learning is a process that is never ending we learn with each project we learn with each experience we learn at home we learn at work we learn at every place we go we learn with travel so so the learning didn't have to stop so i learned i i interned for 2 years with one of the top architects called uh, Talati Panthki and where i was exposed to the best finishes a uh, top of the line work and uh, extremely kept my eyes open even there my my mentor used to say that uh, you may not be doing uh, a lot of taking decisions at this moment but all you can do is keep your eyes open and see what is going around uh, around you you got to keep your eyes open and observe and in and just just absorb everything that is that you are seeing so that's that was two years of absorbing and then another four years with another architect called kiran patki in mumbai and she uh, 
exposed me to another level where she had done a lot of work for the Oberoi hotels and she was doing a lot of work for uh, the ITC, Moria Sheraton, Windsor Manor and all the hotels all over the country. So that gave me a lot of uh, exposure to the hospitality business and I could, uh, you know, actually work um, as a right hand for the uh, presidential suites where uh, President Bill Clinton came and stayed in Moria Sheraton. So we also did the Ambani house there. And uh, it was, a, again, a different experience because she was working with corporates like Tata's and Birla's and a lot of uh, good work there. And then life brought me to Bombay, I mean, Bhopal. It was a small city. So my again, there was a decision to be made there. My father said, do you want to be a big fish in a small pond or do you want to be a small fish in a big pond? So make up your mind. And it, it, I don't think a place should, you know, confine you to do what you really dream for. It doesn't matter where you are. If you want to do something and you have the right will and the right mind to do it, you will learn and you will grow. So just, I mean, follow it and don't stop there. So I, I moved to um, Bhopal in the year of 2001. And uh, I started my practice independently because I had enough experience from Mumbai then. Now, when you are starting on your own, you know, there it's a very different uh, ball game. There's a lot of responsibility. You're firstly trying to, you know, like uh, uh, see how the place is, how the ecosystem is, and how people think their, their mindset, their way of working, their way of living, their lifestyle, what they like. Very, very completely different to what was happening in Mumbai. And... Uh, uh, since I had this thing that no, now that I'm starting on my own, I won't give up. I, I just uh, took my first project with Reliance Industries and I did an office for them. And then there was no looking back. We did a lot of work for corporates. We did offices for Bajaj Alliance. We did for Mahindra and Mahindra. So those days was a lot of uh, work with corporates because I was still new to the town. I didn't know a lot of people here. I was trying to, you know, so working with corporates was an easy thing. Then as I got familiar with people here, I started taking up residential work. And uh, so it, it, it's, a, it's something you have to build and uh, trust, be responsible when you have to, you know, build your own uh, empire, you need, when your own practice, it takes time and patience. And it's only when you feel confident that, no, okay, I think I can do this. You expand. I had more people in, uh, built a better team and started taking projects at a different level. I would like to, you know, at this juncture, say another thing, I know it's a little um, uh, gender bias, it may sound, but it's very difficult to, you know, back then in 2001, for a woman to be taken seriously was really dif difficult. I mean, I was about 26, 27. And when I would be in front of a client, he would like, uh, firstly, be surprised that I've come and, you know, like, I'm doing this. But uh, then in the next meeting, when he would see the technical drawings, you know, talking technically, that's when he would be a bit convinced that, no, okay, I think she knows her work. I think she knows her work. So uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to, uh, you know, it was, uh, but, but then it, it's very easy once you have a name. And I think uh, working with honesty, integrity, and uh, responsibly is, is helps one grow. So this is a story of a journey. It's it's come with a lot of uh, hard work and struggle. It may seem, I mean, I had a fantastic family to back me with whatever I was doing, but it needs a lot of uh, determination to continue what you're doing. And, you know, at no point you've got to allow yourself to, you know, like, uh, no, I can't do this. No, I mean, you have to challenge yourself. You have to step forward that I can do this. We've taken up uh, 
challenging properties, heritage properties um, all over Madhya Pradesh where and travel at the wee hours of night, like 3 a.m. taken trains alone and, you know, uh, just gone there and done what we know best, that is design. So it's, it's, it's a story and through this story and through your passion, you built through stories into your work. So all our projects, I'm sure that's the case with all our, I mean, my, my colleagues here, like Akshay is here and, you know, we try to tell a story to our client. They come to us and they, they, it's, it's a narrative that we try to give them through our thought process. So it, it's like, uh, say a client has come to you with a little project and they're telling you that, okay, this is my my requirement and this is what I want. You understand it and then you weave your own story behind it. You understand your client and you be, then you weave your narrative behind it, behind that design to make that yours, what you call yours. These are my thoughts on design. I mean, I have a small little project Why, when we're talking about narratives. I would like, if you don't mind, to show you a couple of slides so that you understand what I am trying to, you know, maybe uh, say. So I'm just going to uh, do this little... Uh, can you see the screen? So this is the project we got for uh, doing the design for Minto Hall, the rooftop restaurant for uh, Minto Hall. Uh, you all know that everybody in Bhopal knows uh, the value and the, you know, the grandeur that the place and the importance that this place holds to all of us. It's very close to our hearts now because it's done up so well by a friend here and uh, I was extremely humbled and privileged to work on the rooftop restaurant. I, I, I'm, I'm, I was entrusted this beautiful, uh, you know, space where we had to build a story, a narrative to tell people. So here is something that again, you know, uh, I didn't know where to start because it was just a block given. And they said that make a restaurant here. This is a heritage property. And uh, now you've got to uh, make it look like a, a kind of fine dining restaurant. So why don't you, you know, design it for us? So I had, I, I was, you know, like, and, and the big, big thing was that you have to finish it in 20 days. So designing, when you get a free hand is damn good. I mean, this is like a dream come true that you have a free hand. But it also sometimes, you know, kind of... Uh, when a client gives you a brief, it makes it very easy for you to lead the way. But uh, when you just left it on your own, you have so many thoughts traveling in your head that you don't know where to start at times. And especially when you're bound with time, we were told to finish this in, you know, like uh, 20 days. So uh, we started that, where do I start? Now, this is what thought came to me is that this is already a heritage property. It's got this Edwardian architecture and it's got, you know, like uh, the entire uh, colonial furniture already there in the ground floor. And I have to live up to the um, uh, regalness of this place and do justice to it. So uh, what do I do? So we created the Bhopal story here. What we try to do is the bring the essence of Bhopal through artifact, artifacts. So this made me roam around all over, uh, you know, the little city in the walkway by lanes, talk to historians and see what Bhopal was about. And I, I managed to gather things like you know, the surais and, you know, a lot of these ittardans and a lot of these little, little details 
which were all placed on the you know uh, backdrops of the wall they were created to you know kind of uh, bring in the bhopali flavor in the ambience and we have a story about the begums and nawabs and what they are all about and you know how how they this is the bar where we put in you know all the pictures they're not very clear they're not extremely good photos but what they did was we did was we got all the retro photos of the viceroy and uh the cars they use and the community that was there and then we gave it that pop color and made it a little modern in the sense to you know like uh, create a little theme for the bar so it was everything around the story was around bhopal everything was about bhopal and uh, the the lamps everything was extremely uh, on the mughal side of it so the the ambience was basically it was it was a narrative to tell about our city for our people that went to dine in there so these are the stories we create the narratives we create they all come from um, i think somewhere our travel the memories we have it's all imprinted in there and they somehow come out onto our pencils and then in translate themselves into the computer and a drawing boards and finally on the site so it's it's the whole process is uh, you know step by step little by little but it's interesting and a lot of people are involved a lot of artists are involved a lot of labor is involved carpenters painters they all are part of this design process and they all are part of the stories we create and there are many many more stories we've uh, made but there are other speakers too so i don't want to take up too much time this has been my journey my little journey thank you so much for listening i i think i'll move over to the next presenter and uh, request shweta to take this forward thank you so much thank, thank you, you so much ma'am thank you so much ma'am that was really inspiring and i'm thank you ma'am i would request yeah, now mr akshay selkar sir just take this out now yeah i would request can. yes sir i would request you sir architect and planner co-founder of h and a consultants bhopal to address the audience yeah first of all uh, ravi sir it was a nice presentation and it's always great to hear you Thank so, you so, so thank you, IES University, to to for inviting on such an uh, interesting topic. Uh, I think uh, let's not uh, go into the journey of how we came to architecture and how all things started. I would. Uh, can you hear me? I hope everyone can hear me. Hello. Yes, sir. Okay. So. rather than uh, uh, describing the entire journey i would really like to focus on the design and its process and how we should uh, move or take any project so so generally generally uh, I, you can open these slides later no problem but anyways it's okay uh, so whenever you you uh, like uh, like in our college we were taught that architecture in architecture form follows function so that is something uh, a, a type of language we were we were we were taught that you should whenever you take a project you should try to constrain your design or your functionality to the form but when i traveled when i moved ahead when i visited different places and i saw the projects i understood that it 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 actually follows the fiction form follows the fiction and by fiction i really don't mean the design aspect or the or the the shapes or the size or the footprint of the the building or the design but the stories which which is created by the people who are living there so this is how the project is narrated with the people and maybe you have designed something with a sense but may not it may not be used in that way so the people have their own perception of accepting a design and they create a dialogue between the built space and their own so that is what the biggest narrative is that how 
the user or the end user have taken your design or the build form and how they are they are they are actually using it this is what i think now now there are there are a lot of projects we have done majorly we do hospitality and restaurants and cafes so like you can see on the screen um, one of our current completed projects is a resort in madhai i would really like to 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 describe the entire process of of designing and execution so this was a piece of land uh, can you just uh, uh, move to the second slide uh, yeah that's it yeah just that's it so when we got this uh, project it was a open plain land there was no uh, vegetation uh, but we were having few few uh, elements of nature like uh, lakes lake was there river was there there were a backdrop of mountains also so we just thought let's take an inspiration from these elements so if you see this slide and i have put a, a drawing of a cottage the the shape of roof is like like the like a shape of a hill or a valley so it is it is a slope structure but we didn't adopted the regular hut shape structure but we try to make it uh, a, a type of origamic uh, pattern of design where there are slopes where there are uh, heights there are a sort of contours so this is how we we thought of building our roof design now now i, I request you to please uh, move on the first slide yeah so this was a site plan you can see there is a it's 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 a long patch of land and you can identify it it is divided into two parts so one plot was uh, like it was the uh, the original plot part was on the right hand side and the remaining part where you can see a track that's a cycle drive that was purchased later so that's why you can see at one portion there is a build structure there are a lot of build structure and the, the another portion is left open so our idea was to like you can see the reception block in the first slide our idea was to make it inviting like when you when you enter this property this this is a open building where where as if somebody is has is inviting and, and the hands are open to invite guests or the visitors so that was the shape and the center site have was having lot of restriction because it is in the forest locality there very less percentage of construction was allowed so we adopted half uh, rcc structure and rest were fabricated structure so at the entrance the the structure was fabricated and we try to give a height and you can move on the next slide please yeah that's it that's it so i have explained what was the inspiration taken be, be, behind the design of the cottages and we try to capture nature from all the the angles like if you see a view of a room above the pictures of cottages so you can see there is one view towards the lake uh, maybe the the screen is a little bit small or the picture is small you may not be identify the the clarity of the background but still and uh, there are two windows one is catching the pool side view and one is catching the lake so we have tried to maximize our resources and what all things were available uh, uh, in and around the sites secondly uh, concrete was the main element where we we just thought that it is a, it is something which is which can be molded in any shape so you can see uh, there are there is a design on the roof Uh, which 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 is which is actually the birds series of birds so we 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 cut the shape of birds with the help of cnc and we we just pasted it on the ply base and 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 when the concrete was laid on it and we removed the 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 shuttering that design automatically um, was there so we try to just engrave or sculpt the design rather than creating false things and the additional interior where we just thought that let's keep it raw and just give that element of design on ceiling so different room have different concept like moon or or 
or or birds or or butterflies or fish so because it's a natural site so we just try to catch up these elements uh, you can move to the next slide please that's it so now that is the entrance gate as i explained you in my first uh, like on the first slide like the inspiration were hills and valleys so the gate we we we, we instead of putting a straight gate we just thought that we can incline uh, that we can use an inclination on the top which re, which match to the inclination of the hill which is actually at the backdrop of the gate it's not visible but when you stand on the other side you can see the hill and the angle is exactly the same which is of that hill so you actually that 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 angle merge with the background so that was something which we actually uh, got on the site and we took it as an inspiration uh in the second photograph um, as i said uh, we were not we we were not having much elements of nature so we just thought whatever we have we'll explore it so that's the reception block and here you can see when you stand inside the reception block you can see the sky as we have made a roof which looks as if it is elevated or or it is floating on a sky so instead of using column we try to use a fabricated lighter sections so that the view is not obstructed and, and it looks like a floating structure so when you sit or stand inside the reception area i'm talking about the second photograph you can not only you can see the doors or the opening but you can see the sky from the upper level so that was an idea so through which we can just have that nature connectivity in and around third picture is a swimming pool it 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 is located at the center of the property and rest of the activities are placed around it um, the idea was to there were two basic ideas one was to create a view definitely we have view of river but in the night time not and uh, lights are not allowed on the gardens and, and different areas because of wild animals and all this so we just uh, lit up our pool with with a uh, dim lighting so you have a inside view also so guests staying there can have um, or can enjoy a pool view uh, can you just uh, lift up the the next slide yeah thank you a uh, lit, lit yeah that's it so um, i explain about the reception why the structure was done and what was the story behind it it we we just tried to connect it with nature and uh, the 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 there are a lot of images so i hope uh, what i will say you would be able to connect uh, there is a image of a bathroom where you can see bathtub and the shower area which is open to sky just um, the idea was to that like we don't want to build a brick wall structure so we just kept it open of glass roof so again you can you can feel the sky and the openness uh, the bottom picture with the reception you can see a huge blue painting with two circular windows so actually if i don't know i don't know if you are able to identify it or not but there is a leopard uh, resting at the center um this the site is located in madai and uh, madai is famous for like leopard sighting so we just uh, we just painted that leopard and the leopard is resting on a tree the idea was that whoever is coming here he can get a feel of getting being relaxed so that was an idea so so we just thought that we'll paint a huge wall with some bright blue color which merge with the sky on the top and because in the night sky is dark so we just took darker blue color so that it merged with with that that texture and the color and the yellow color is highlighted always so you you have the sense of resting or enjoying this place uh, can you just uh, shift the slide a little bit uh, on the upper upper side yeah so what i explained you earlier also the in in the in the bottom three picture you can see the ceiling we have used lot of the forms on the on the concrete uh, roof where like Uh, in the the right picture the right high sent picture you can see the moon uh, uh, in the different phase of time then then there are some birds uh, actually the size is very small so i really am not able to see uh, 
but i hope you understand what were the basic and the principal idea of uh, creating uh, and 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 designing this uh, the resort uh, i don't know whether the the next slide is there or not uh, do we have next slide no okay so uh, what i want to say is you have to explore your opportunities you need to understand what are your your threats what are your weaknesses and what is the requirement of your client and how you can make uh, justice to that particular patch of land which is given to you for design so that's a type of like narration you can do with your client your built form and the people who are going to use there has to be a dialogue which which is a uh, which is a type of in uh, unsaid words which people many people communicate with you many people don't communicate but they have a sense of uh, 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 they they have an opinion about the design so this is how you have to like narrate or you have to think and you have to create your own story first you have to create your own story and then you can make others to accept it or uh, understand it i think that's it i would like to say i hope you all understand what was my process thank you thank, thank you. you so much sir it was really refreshing blue to have a glance of the design thank you so much sir wonderful akshay lovely work we look forward to going there soon yeah sure sure we can plan we can definitely plan one more thing i would like to add if if you have little bit time because there were fashion uh, fashion designing students involved see architecture and fashion are is exactly same when if you see the the colonial or the historic time the way architecture was people used to dress up you can see lot of ornaments lot of um lot of those detailings which were in architecture also and with the time you can you can identify how the fashion has changed today if you see the architecture there are a lot of minimalistic approach to the design and same is with the with the clothing and fashion industry so that is what i would like to end up thank you very much so you think akshay that uh, history plays a really important role in you know creating these stories see if there is not a history you don't have any identity of present if you remove your history you are nothing but just uh, a nut which can which have no connection you don't have history see if you cut your roots you can grow for some time but definitely you will you will fall down after some time that's what i want to say okay sir uh, moving on i request professor dheeraj kumar sir director of nid madhya pradesh to catch hold of the audience good afternoon everyone uh, i would like to uh, begin with uh, thanking uh, ds yadav ji for having all of us on this platform uh, i think this is sir your initiative which is quite interesting because i get to hear ravisha ji and aksha ji and uh, their insights and their journey and i think the whole narrative has been quite enriching for me uh, i would like to uh, you know thank sanjay shrivastav ji the dean architecture uh, so i think you started the whole session by introducing it in a very right manner and when uh, i received the title of the session i was quite overwhelmed because that is something which is almost like you are using a synonym with the word you know design and narratives these two things they kind of have traveled uh, 40000 years of recorded history where neanderthals to you know prehistoric era period they used to do some sort of markings uh, on the cave and till now that is something which has been continuously happening only we have evolved them in terms of either language or other expressions and or maybe design so i i see this uh, particular topic quite uh, a appropriate topic for a young design school uh, so 
so before i get on to you know other aspects of uh, what i really would want to discuss at this point of time i really would want to you know you know kind of acknowledge a couple of point from uh, ravisha and akshay ji's uh, presentation so i i think ravisha ji you had a overwhelming journey from mumbai to bhopal and it has been a wonderful and inspirational thing uh, not only for the student for you know uh, people like us also where from a pinch of royalty to heritage and coming back making such a big decision coming from a big city to small city and yet making your mark and secondly what i i, I think this is the third or fourth time i am meeting you uh, uh, but i think certain things remains quite common and every time i used to always carry and wonder one thing that uh, why i am meeting you again and again in different forums where you know uh, so today i found that one very common thing amongst all the people here is that we are somewhere connected by one thing whether it is uh, you know bs yadav ji or ravisha ji akshay kumar ji or sanjay shrivastav ji we all come from some sort of link with our construction industry so my father is an engineer uh, you know he retired as engineer my brother is engineer so my family is into uh, you know uh, you can say the hard side of the affairs in building the economy uh, so we were destined to meet today so today is the day when uh, probably i think uh, you know we'll be able to forge a new relationship with each other and i'm sure uh, things will go much far from here the metaphor of fish and pond i think you have used is very appropriately that is a choice which i think all the students have to make at some point of time everybody has to make you know to make it take a decision whether to move towards a bigger city or to a smaller city and you know take a decision there are pros and cons to everything but uh, i think uh, people like you give us a lot of courage to think inwards and look at a lot of possibilities with a country like india where i think the future lies in the small towns even smaller towns now bhopal is not a small town and it never was i think but i'm sure there are going to be more greener pastures in the smaller towns of this country uh, your uh, i think pictures of the some of uh, your project uh, one of your project from minto hall i think they are quite uh, all uh, inspiring and i'm sure at some point of time we'll definitely uh, request you to be professionally engaged with us also uh, and you know take your take benefit of your services akshay ji i meeting you for the first time and i really feel your mandal madhal project uh, is quite inviting i i really personally would want to you know go and see that and experience that thing because when any uh, living space project is connected with the immediate environment around it a natural environment around it i think that sort of seamless integration we often don't experience in the city and uh, most of us we have spent most of our life in a big city so i think uh, the kind of structures you have created which kind of moves uh, very flawlessly with the nature in the background uh, i think they were quite inspiring and i really want to experience it myself so and your presentation was very very you know um, uh, you can say well thought and well paced and with lot of cues for the young designers so thanks a lot for that see i uh, when i seriously started looking at design i i am a product of nift i graduated when there used to be only one nift in delhi uh, there used to be a lot of hype around design especially fashion actually because nift was more of a fashion college and i come from the product design department which uh, used to focus on fashion accessories there so at some point of time most of the people make you make uh, used to make us realize that you are the chosen one because there were only 30 of us from the whole you know competitive process and all that and you know at that point of time you used to be very juvenile in many ways and a lot of things which you were learning in design school Uh, they were very new you have never heard of any of most of those things and at that point of time i'm talking about 1994 uh, <coughs> the uh, the whole uh, society was uh, not very design ready 
so you really don't get to learn from newspapers magazines and television so they used to be very archaic in terms of uh, design connect so starting your journey from that and reaching to today's time when we are totally digitally connected and we have multiple avenues to experience design and all that i think it has been quite an overwhelming journey so when a lot of people ask that who's the best designer you know or who's the first designer so many a times i used to you know talk about few names who used to be quite inspirational for me but then actually i started answering to myself you know questioning and looking at what actually who would have been the first person to look at design so that's when one thing which a lot of you know designers used to say that i think the creator or the god however we define it is the first person who would have designed this world because the world the way it is it appears that it has been designed by somebody so god becomes to me a first creator and then i thought okay god is something which is too heavy for everyone to absorb so who can be something which we can relate to which is more agreeable and all that by most of the people so i feel that evolution is the only thing that is another designer so when you look at evolution of any product so that's where you experience a lot of design in that so there is a whole lot of uh, you can say the design is a small uh, re interpretation of the evolution process that we teach in most of the design schools and uh, i think when uh, ravisha ji was uh, you know congratulating akshay ji uh, so there you were saying that this connect with history so i think this connect with history in design is something which is very intrinsic which is inseparable you really cannot take it out from it because you really cannot design a new wheel without looking at the old wheels you know so it's almost like reinventing the wheel and all that see another thing uh, uh, the most uh, crucial thing for young designers is uh, that you know now we are living in a google generation so whenever we have to we have any query we try to google it uh, so i'm sure uh, most of the uh, uh, kids would have googled what is design you know and they would have i think got i don't know how many os in the google how many pages and all how many definitions so the best thing is uh, about design is that if there are 1 million definitions or one can say it if you are looking at you know how many number of products and interfaces around you that many definitions of design can actually exist because design is a very very common experience for the people and everyone connects with the whole attitude and the attribute of design in his or her own personal way so i think that is what is the whole uh, uh, wholesomeness of design we are looking at uh, most of the design education is not very prescriptive in nature because uh, most of you are going to make a choice uh, design education is very different from any other education from and when i am saying design education i am including in uh, this architecture and all the creative kind of education in this see here we try to give inculcate a lot of confidence in the student as the most primary thing because often what happens is this lack of confidence in the people because what happens in normal life if you tell somebody to do something even a simple task uh the person first tries to reconcile and strategize the whole thing in his mind his or her mind and they try to come up with a final solution but in design we have something called creative confidence where people are willing to share something which is unfinished which is still in process because a designer who is truly involved with the attitude of design and the development of design they look at design as a very continuous process uh, so that's why most of the designers will always say as i think ravisha ji said that we are constant learners 
you know, we keep observing. Uh, we are very good listeners also. Uh, and we are very keen observers. You will uh, never see, uh, you know, a lot of designers uh, uh, who, they will not talk just like that. You know, unless until uh, they will have a reason to speak because they want their products to speak. They want their creations to speak. So this creative confidence is something which becomes the foundation and the building common building block of the design education. And that somewhere ensures that every student is treated and made to experience the education, whatever you know, uh, college he is in, in a very unique manner. So we don't try to replicate everyone as one single entity you know, or a one single graduate profile. But if there are a batch of say like 40 students, there will be 40 different expressions of design or competencies of design graduating from a system. Uh, so that is why I think uh, most of the uh, universities and education systems or educational bodies, they're not very comfortable in starting the design because you really don't have textbooks. Because if you want to set up an engineering school or a management school, you have certain prescriptive documents which comes from the statutory bodies uh, of the government. And you comply to that, you really can start a design, a, a you know engineering school or a business school. But in design school, it is totally around the teachers, you know, a, a lot of uh, you know consultants and the experts from the industry. They create an environment. They kind of simulate this environment of evolution. You know how to make the people uh, you know experience this evolution of design, which happens around us in the society in more compressed manner in a very limited time of whatever you know duration of the program so that's what makes it very unique uh, that's why most of the design teachers and uh, the people who contribute to the design education who come as guest lecturers and all that they are professional practitioners because uh, they don't come with something which is a very prescriptive phenomenon, but every time when you call a professional practitioner, they come with a body of experience. So when I was you know, listening to uh, the presentation of Ravisha ji and Akshay ji, I, I, I was kind of experiencing a design lecture. You know, I was just looking at it as a design lecture and I was learning a lot from that. So that is what happens in design education. You have a lot of you know, environment being brought into the design education. Uh, I, you know, uh, have been uh, quite fortunate to have oscillated uh, seamlessly between government, private, and industry. Uh, so, in a way, I can, you know, uh, uh, talk about almost all the three scenarios. Uh, I have worked with government institution. I started, in fact, my career with NIFT only. And I have worked with industry also. And uh, I have worked with a private institution called Pearl Academy, which is one of the largest you know, fashion school in the private sector. And I have worked with a very specialized niche sector school, uh, uh, which focused on gem and jewelry, which was by the industry only. So one thing which I always try to uh, uh, maintain as a professional, uh, as my contribution is that how industry, society, and design can connect and seamlessly work together. So I think uh, that is something which uh, kind of makes you a lot of comfortable when you are looking at uh, your own professional practice or yourself in the professional sphere. So. What I uh, would have a suggestion for the students is that I think look at it as uh, a career option where you will have a lot of possibility to customize your own life. You really can uh, work as designer in a big city, in a small city, even a village, because now design has uh, kind of created a possibility uh, between um, uh, products to a lot of social design aspects also. So there are a lot of projects which are happening in the social design scenario. Uh, so I think uh, that is what I really feel uh, the student should be focusing. 
And I just want to check how much time we really have because I think it's almost one hour. So, so that uh, maybe Shweta can comment on that. What is the time limit? Shweta, are sir, you there? We can, uh, yes, sir. Uh, we can proceed, sir. We can, can go proceed. ahead. Okay, how much time roughly we are looking at? Uh, till 6 p.m. Till 6. Okay, wonderful. That's good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, are we looking at any queries at some point of time from uh, any of the Facebook uh, you know, people? Hello, Shweta? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do we have any yes, sir. Queries? Yes, sir. Uh, do we have any queries there? So, uh, should we reserve around 10 15 minutes for that in the end? Uh, yes, sir. There must be queries with Kushbu, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, I think uh, then, then probably you need to flag them. Then, uh, any one of us can answer that also. Yes, sir. So uh, now I'll uh, get back to my session again. See, uh, when uh, we are uh, looking at design, uh, the history point of view, uh, design in its current expression is not really very old. Uh, uh, Post-industrial revolution, the current format of design came into existence. And especially, uh, there, was, there were two design schools uh, in Germany, they are accredited to the current model of education, which is now practiced almost in the entire world by various design schools. Uh, so Bauhaus and Ulm, these were the two design schools. So at that point of time, because what happened after uh, industrial revolution is that suddenly uh, uh, manufacturing became very demand based and volume based. Earlier, it was more like a vocation. You know, people, for example, if you look at pottery, potter will decide how many pots he wants to make. So it's not like uh, he is told to make one uh, million pots in a month and which needs to be shipped and whatever. So the moment it became very uh, industry driven or demand driven, uh, so we were talking about a huge volume. So then products used. Uh, were aligned with a lot of processes and a lot of standardization. So that's when these design schools, they contributed a lot. So if you look at uh, post Bauhaus, uh, uh, what really has happened to the entire world is that we started thinking in a very rectangular and cuboidical way. You know, we started looking in a very geometric manner because these both the design schools were uh, based out of uh, Germany and Germans are very good at geometry and all that. So that is how they culturally are trained to think and all that. Uh, and things seems to be very right. And everybody in the world kind of got a template that how one can teach this creative aspect of design through design schools. Uh, but then what happened was design was still performing at a very lower level. And people were trying to look at that, how can we scale up design? You know, because the kind of requirement in terms of volume uh, by the society was on a very different scale. And the number of design schools, say like 20 years back in the, in the entire world were very, very few. So around 19, I think uh, 70 or 80, I don't exactly remember the year, uh, Stanford, uh, uh, with one of the professional uh, uh, design service provider, uh, they collaborated. Uh, in fact, uh, Bill Morigage uh, used to work uh, as a guest faculty in uh, Stanford uh, uh, for uh, teaching a lot of creative modules and all that. So that's when uh, the university decided that we should start a full-fledged design program. So that's when, and which is based out of uh, the practice of the, uh, uh, this design studio. Uh, so that was IDEO, IDEO, we call it. So they started the first design thinking program, which was more management uh, oriented and which was more uh, simpler, which had 
uh, very less prerequisite because uh, the classic Bauhaus model versus the design thinking education model. Uh, <laughs> the basic difference was in the earlier, uh, the student, a learner goes through the entire experience of it. Uh, whereas uh, in design thinking model, they were looking at something which is a more of a management uh, perspective of design and all that. And so that is what happened. Then a lot of engineering schools started looking at a lot of possibility with the uh, 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 design that how they can embed in the engineering uh, curriculum and all. So that's when third education model which is again based uh, on the design uh, you know core uh, was the systems design uh, uh, framework so today in the world there are three frameworks which are available but still the uh, for anybody out of state out of school uh, the most recommended and preferred and practiced model is the bauhaus model only so most of the uh, design school, which classically offers a program at the bachelor's level, uh, they all offer a Bauhaus model. So I'm sure IES is also offering something similar. Uh, at the master's uh, level, uh, uh, you try to offer something which is more design thinking based model, because uh, uh, by that time, what happens a lot of flexibility in the student in terms of learning. Uh, it diminishes, you, know. uh, you uh, start becoming a little more uh, opinionated uh, because till uh, 12th, you are uh, still quite pliable and moldable. So uh, the Bauhaus uh, model of education requires that. And the third model, which is systems uh, design model, that is more for the technical side of the design when you are designing a, a you know, engineering interface or a product or anything like that, the inside part of it, that's when you require that. So each of them have are customized towards those sort of sensibilities. Uh, so I think uh, that is something which is about the kind of uh, history of uh, education uh, when we are looking at it from the global perspective. But when we come to India, uh, history of design uh, begins with the, uh, the seed of it parallelly was uh, formulated by the education committee, which was first formulated after uh, the independence. Uh, so that's when initially what was uh, uh, suggested by the committee was to institute the IITs and AIMS, in a medical institution, which we now know them as IIT and AIMS. Uh, then after that, uh, they said that after five years of their uh, functioning, we should start with the IIMs, the management schools, because that's when, by the time you will be, uh, you would have grown in the country sufficiently uh, on the engineering side and medical because that is required. Uh, so you would require a lot of managers to manage the affair because your scale of operation will be such. So the IIMs came into being then and Around that time only they said Ki, you would require to have your own uh, products being developed by you. So that's when the whole concept of uh, NID was being born. So the first NID started functioning in 1960s, early 60s. And then, uh, you know, eventually, initially it was more like a vocational school where you were teaching uh, something. And uh, the initial team was mentored by the people from Bauhaus and Ulm team. Uh, their professors, they came and mentored all the faculties and the faculties traveled to uh, uh, different institutions in the world to get trained specifically on that. So NID has a very unique curriculum uh, in a way because uh, uh, Ray and Charles Eames uh, in 1950s, I think 58, uh, they, uh, they uh, gave a report, uh, the India Design Report, in which uh, they studied the, the uniqueness of our Indian fabric. And they kind of made a lot of recommendations to be incorporated in the design curriculum of NID. So uh, in a way, NID's uh, curriculum interface is very, very unique because it was very uh, thoughtfully uh, considered the ethos of Indian education. Then around 2004, uh, the government felt that you would require more number of NIDs. So there was a lot of senior, senior, uh, serious deliberation on that. And in 19, uh, I, I think 2000, 
14, finally, uh, four new NIDs conceptualization was approved. So now we have four more uh, NIDs. Uh, one is in Bhopal, which I am heading, and then one is in Jorhat, another is in Kurshetra, and one in Amravati, uh, which is in South. Uh, so the whole idea was these five NIDs kind of looks at the complete Indian topography uh, and cater to the regional as well as the national and the global needs. Uh, so ethos of the curriculum are quite uh, you know similar, uh, but we all have our freedom because we all are now recently on 13th of I think February, if I remember it correctly this year only, uh, we were declared as the Institute of National Importance and uh, we can award degrees and all that. So, uh, you know, uh, what uh, is very unique is that uh, the government is also very serious about something like this in a country like India, uh, where at times uh, as a general person, you try to think that design doesn't come as a very obvious expression in terms of making a serious investment because it is very investment centric. Uh, but government has made a very serious investment in uh, these institutions and, uh, you know, uh, uh, the campus is fairly large. It is 30 acre plus with state of the art campus and all that. So I remember uh, when uh, B.S. Yadavji visited the campus, he himself was quite uh, surprised to see that. He said, Ki, I think some of the facilities are much better than the private segment. Uh, and that was just because uh, the government has realized the potential of design. And uh, these four NIDs somewhere uh, uh, are going to become responsible to create a lot of regional competency. You know, that's where uh, we really would want to uh, kind of uh, help uh, institute like IES who are very seriously committed because whenever I have interacted with the team, I have always felt that uh, they are very committed. They're very passionate about, uh, you know, creating a very unique competence and all. Uh, so I, I uh, really wish them um, best of luck in their endeavors and, I really look forward that whatever possible way we can help. And I'm sure that I can say on behalf of, uh, you know, uh, the industry fraternity and representatives like Akshay ji and Ravisha ji that I'm sure we all will definitely would want to help the institutions who are very serious and committed institutions like IES to definitely do a good uh, uh, environment building and propagation of design sensitivity in this country.